I'm Dr. Ajibola, cardiovascular system embryology part 2. Ventricular septation, the medial walls of the expanding ventricles join to form the intraventricular septum. And if you look at this diagram, we can see here we have our muscular intraventricular septum and the space between the muscular intraventricular septum and the endocardial cushion down to be our intraventricular foramen which we actually wants to form we actually wants to close that foramen if you look at the next diagram the troncocolar septum and the aorticopulmonary septum grows towards the muscular septum and form the membranous septum thereby closing the intraventricular foramen looking at this, at this diagram we can see here we have our muscular septum so the aorticopulmonary septum grows towards the muscular septum and thereby forming a what a membranous septum so both the membranous septum and the muscular septum both of them make up the intraventricular septum and also by the help of the endocardial cushion we are able to complete the formation of this membrane membranous septum so the two th the two important things that we need to be able to form the membranous septum number one we need the, the help of the endocardial cushion and then we also need the aorticopulmonary septum and that's why if you have a patient if there's a patient with a problem with aorticopulmonary septum it probably due to neural crest migration because if you remember aorticopulmonary septum comes from the neural crest so if there's a neuro, neural crest defect, if there's a defect in neural crest migration, that can lead to problem in forming the aorticopulmonary septum, and then which can also lead to problem in forming the membranous septum. So patient can have also then they can have ventricular septal defect. Example of those conditions, for example, in patient who has a persistent trochus arteriosus or patient who have a tetralogy of fallow. So in those patients. They can have problem in forming their membranous septum because of problem with the aorticopulmonary septum. Also, if a patient has a problem with the endocardial cushion, so if there's endocardial cushion defects, that could also lead to a problem in forming the what the membranous septum. The growth of the endocardial cushion separates atria from ventricles and also contributes to both the atrial septation and the membranous portion of the intraventricular septum. So the endocardial cushion is very important in dividing the atria into two, also dividing the ventricles into two, and also very important in forming our what's called them, our valves. So let's talk about the pathology of cell with ventricular septum. The first one we'll be talking about is ventricular septal defect, VSD, ventricular septal defects. This is one of the causes of the late cyanosis. Remember, there are three major causes of the late cyanosis. Number one is atrial septal defects, ventricular septal defects, and then patent ductus arteriosus. So this is one of the causes of late cyanosis, and it's a left to right shunting of blood. Remember, normally after after the child is born, right, the pressure on the right side, on the left side, is more than the pressure on the right side. So because of that, now. Because of the, if there's a defect in between the ventricles, so the blood is going to be moving from the left ventricle into the right ventricle. And don't forget the type of blood that is shunt in this time around is what is the oxygenated what blood in the left in the left ventricle that wants to live through the aorta. And this most common congenital heart disease, like about 30% of all congenital heart disease, prevalence is males actually equal to females, and then most self-resolved. And this is due to defects in the membranous part of the intraventricular septum. Which this is actually the most common defects, right? So, if, so most of the time, the problem with VSD is actually the problem forming the membranous what, septum. And this can be associated with them, pastent trochus arteriosus, tetralogy of fallot, creed du chat what's called the syndrome, fetal aqua syndrome, and rupture of intraventricular septum in an acute myocardial infarction. And one of the complications that we see in acute myocardial infarction, especially if there's occlusion of the LAD, which is the left arterial descending artery because it supplies the two thirds, the anterior two thirds of the intraventricular septum. So that if that vessel is occluded, it can actually lead to what's called the necrosis of the what's called of the intraventricular septum. And one of the complications is that what's called the, there can be rupture of that septum, which can lead to what's called the 
ventral septal was different. So let's talk about the clinical findings that I want to see in patients with ventricular septal defect. So let's look at this diagram. So looking at this diagram, here we can see this the right side of the heart, and here we have the left side of the heart. So normally, the oxygenated blood, the oxygenated blood normally comes into the right side of the heart, right? And then from there it goes to the lung for oxygenation, and then return into the left side of the heart, left side of the heart as oxygenated blood, right? Which wants to live through the aorta into the systemic circulation. But in patient with v, in patient with ventricular septal defect, because of the membranous defect, so there's actually a communication between the left ventricle and the right ventricle. So the the oxygenated blood are being shunted from the left side left ventricle into the right ventricle, and this leads to what's called them. This leads to the oxygenated blood being mixed with the deoxygenated blood in the right ventricle thereby increasing the oxygen saturation in the right ventricle and this can also lead to the increase in oxygen saturation in the pulmonary artery so if they give a scenario of a patient who has a congenital heart disease and see that there is increased oxygen saturation in the right ventricle and also increased oxygen saturation in the pulmonary artery so most likely that's a patient with what ventricular septal defect and in this patient, remember during systole, the ventricle contracts, right? And as the ventricle contracts, the blood are being shunted. So more blood are being shunted through the what? Through the defect. And that's why the type of murmur that we hear in this that we have to be hearing in this patient is a ash pan systolic what murmur. And uh, this best head at the lower left standard what border. So in patient with ventricular septal defect. During systole, when the ventricles are contracting, that's when the blood is being shunted into, into the right side of the heart, into the right ventricle. And in this patient, we want to hear the ash pan systolic was normal. And like I mentioned earlier, we want to see increased oxygen saturation in the right ventricle and also in the pulmonary artery. And one of the complications that we see in this patient is SMEGA syndrome. And like we have what's SMEGA syndrome, these are the signs and symptoms that we see. In a patient that used to have a left to right shunt that became what a right to left shunt, and this is due to because of the increased blood flow through the pulmonary artery. This leads to some changes in the pulmonary artery. For instance, one of the changes that we see there is the smooth muscle hyperplasia or hypertrophy, thereby leading to narrowing of the pulmonary artery, and that can decrease the radius, thereby decrease incre leads to increase in resistance to flow. And that can lead to increase in pressure in the pulmonary artery, thereby causing pulmonary hypertension. And then because of the increased pressure in the pulmonary artery, the right ventricle needs to increase its pressure to be able to push the blood through the pulmonary artery, and that will lead to increase in pressure in the right ventricle. And the right ventricle, the right ventricular pressure will keep increasing until it's more than the pressure on the left side. And at that point, the left to right shunt is going to now become the is going to now become right to left shunt and at that point the deoxygenated blood now they want to have access to the left side of the heart and from there they can go into what into the stem circulation and that's why we call it a late sinusis also another complication that this patient can have is also heart failure they can also have a paradoxical embolism but normally if somebody have a deep venous thrombosis like a clot in their leg normally the clot comes into the cava system comes into the right, right side of the heart and from there it can go into the lungs and cause pulmonary embolism but because this patient have a big O in their heart the clots can easily go from the right side right ventricle into the left side of the heart and from there it can have access to the systemic circulation and if it goes to the brain it can cause stroke and if it goes to any organ in the body it can cause what's called the infarction in those organs also this patient also have increases for infected endocarditis so because of the defect in the heart and the turbulence of turbulence flow of the blood it can actually cause damages to the valve and then this can lead to aggregation of platelets and then fibrin to the valve and also trappings of bacteria in the valve and that can lead to infection of the valve which is endocarditis in these patients the next pathology we'll be talking about is endocardial cushion defects endocardial cushion defect. This is also known as atrioventricular canal defect 
or atrial ventricular septal defect. The endocardial cushion, if you guys remember, remember endocardial cushion is very important in separating the atrials, right, forming the atrial septum, and also separating the ventricle from the ventricular septum, and also separate also formation of the valves because the adverbs they actually develop from what endocardial cushion. So that means if somebody have problem with the endocardial cushion, if you look at this picture, so that means you can have problem in forming the the atrial septum also ventricular septum and also we can also have problem in forming the what the valve so this patient they also have a common valves right and you can see in this picture that in patient with endocardial cushion defect there's a communication between their atrium also we also have communication between the ventricles and the ventricles also the ventricles are also communicating with what with the atria so endocardial cushion defect leads to atrial septa ventricular septa atrial ventricular septa defect and this condition is actually associated with Down syndrome. So anytime you hear Down, anytime you hear the cardiac cushion defect, the first thing that should come to your mind is what Down syndrome. And the way we made the diagnosis is by echocardiogram, and the treatment is what surgery. Thank you guys for watching my video this morning, and don't forget to subscribe to my channel and for more videos. Thank you.